Why do jellyfish exist? When I was a child, I was stung by a jellyfish. It's a pretty unpleasant experience, actually. And the thought occurred to me, why does this creature actually exist? What's its purpose? And I was told later that it served the food chain. That's a bit depressing. Is that really why things exist? Just to serve a food chain? Anyway, let's go back to Greece. Around about 300 BC, during that century, one of the greatest philosophers, Aristotle, answered this question. What is the purpose of things? Well, Aristotle believed that everything had something inside it called entelechy. And entelechy is a kind of motor that drives things towards their purpose. And the final purpose he called the telos. That whole process is called teleology. It means everything has a purpose. Everything is going somewhere. Everything's headed for some sort of telos, some sort of goal, some final goal. Aristotle thought that things' purpose or telos was to be perfect. So he thought the trees were waiting to become tables and stone was waiting to become a sculpture. Everything had within it the seed of what it would become and what it would become would be perfection. Now don't ask me what the perfect jellyfish looks like, but maybe Aristotle knew. Now we don't really believe that so much anymore, I don't think. But back in those days, it was a strong idea. And in fact, it stayed with Western and Middle Eastern thought for hundreds and hundreds of years. Now Aristotle came to this conclusion by observing everything around him scrupulously. In a way, he was one of the first biologists. He would categorize creatures into different groups. He called this the categorical syllogism. A syllogism is a unit of thought that has some sort of linear causality in it. A sound syllogism needs to have a linear relationship between the premise and the conclusion. For example, all men are mortal. That's a rule. Socrates is a man. We find a member of the category to which the rule applies. Therefore, Socrates is mortal. That's called a categorical syllogism. And he came up with another type of syllogism called the hypothetical syllogism, which is if this happens, then that happens, what we call causation. If A, then B. And a third type of syllogism, which is called the disjunctive syllogism. It means either that or this, either this or that. Either I left my keys in the kitchen or I left them in the bathroom. They're not in the kitchen, therefore they must be in the bathroom. Now, these units of thought, syllogisms, are at the basis of mathematics, pure logic, and much human thought. And our friend Aristotle came up with them. Brilliant. Now, Aristotle loved categorizing things so much that he went about listing all of the different strategies that are used in Greek tragedy. Things like peripatia, anagnorisis, harmatia, nemesis. To this day, students studying literature work off Aristotle's categorization. For him, the purpose of tragedy was a purging of the emotions, what he called catharsis. So when you go to a great play, you feel strong emotions in you, you're being emotionally cleansed. That is the purpose of tragedy for Aristotle. Let's get back to jellyfish. I don't really know what a jellyfish's purpose is, but if it's to sting me, well, I don't think I like jellyfish very much. What about human beings? What's our purpose? For Aristotle, the purpose, the telos of the human being is the good life. The eudaimonia, you in Greek meaning good and daimon meaning spirit, the life of the good spirit. So what's a good life? 
for Aristotle? Well, it's a life of virtue, a life of excellence, a life of plenitude, an ethical life. And by the way, if things end with a final purpose, with a telos, well, how do they begin? Aha! Well, Aristotle said there must be something outside the system that makes it work. And he called that the prime mover, the thing that cannot be moved itself, God. Aristotle was a polymath, meaning that he had ideas about just about everything. The problem is some of those ideas were wrong. They're very beautiful, like teleology, but it's maybe a bit simplistic to think that everything has a beginning and an end and some kind of final purpose. Big ideas to answer a simple question about jellyfish. <laughs>